Asian World Cup qualifiers have returned in March, where we got some surprising results and a nation that is definitely on the rise and a couple of nations that might as well just end their federation at this moment. Get your thoughts in the comments down below of any nation and thoughts of India, Vietnam, Indonesia, Australia, Palestine. You guys get your thoughts in the comments down below. Remember to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here as we're going to get straight into the qualifiers because there's a lot of groups to talk about and a lot of storylines. Group A, Qatar, I mean, they've, they're destroying this group. They're destroying this group. I mean, Ali Al Moez, Akram Afif, both got two goals in their two games against Q8. Q8, they, they did better at home. But Qatar, the defending, two-time defending Asian Cup champions, I gotta start saying that, they're on a roll right now. They're finding a groove and heading into the next round of the World Cup qualifiers. Their objective is to qualify. And with the way Akram Afif is playing, and if Ali Al Moez can find his shooting boots, I think Qatar can turn, return to another World Cup. They can definitely return to another World Cup. And they've already qualified to the next round. Kuwait, they got a massive game next up. And we're going to talk about that next game because India... Oh my god. You want to talk about an embarrassment. First off, I mean, shout out to Afghanistan. Because this is not their A team. This is basically their B slash C team. As some players are still protesting against the Federation. And they beat India in India. Do you know how embarrassing that is if you're Indian? That is a disgrace. End the FA. Get Stimach out of there. Get rid of Chetri. Get rid of all these older players. Start Have a new rebuild. You have to know when it's time to let go. And Indian Federation didn't know when to let go. They kept going, kept going, and now you lose that to Afghanistan of all teams. I mean, it's a fantastic result for Afghanistan. And the second half, they played really well. Agabari getting the goal, then Mokamad getting the penalty in the 88th minute. But this is such an embarrassment for Indian football. I would, if I was Indian, I would feel so ashamed and say, you know what? This federation and this national team doesn't deserve my respect anymore or my time. I'm going to boycott them. And that's what they should do. They should just boycott them. But shout out to Afghanistan. Incredible result for them. Now, who gets the second spot to directly qualify to the third round? Well, India are on four points. Afghanistan on four points. Kuwait on three points. The next game is absolutely critical. It is India hosting Kuwait. We know India beat Kuwait back in uh, November. It's so it's still up for grabs, but with the momentum and everything that's going around Indian football, you kind of think to yourself, they're done. Even though they're in second place, they might be done, but they could rectify it all and qualify to the next round. For Afghanistan, it's going to be very difficult. They're going to host Qatar and then go away to Kuwait. It looks like a very impossible task for them, but hey, they went into India with a B slash C team and won the game. Preliminary thoughts, people, and Indians, I mean, disgrace. Absolute disgrace. Group B is pretty much settled. Also, Japan are on nine points. They beat North Korea 1-0. Tanaka with the only goal of the game. And then Syria surprisingly drew away with Myanmar, but beat them 7-0 at home. How do you draw away and then beat them 7-0 at home? <laughs> I mean, Kirubin got a hat trick. <laughs> that should not be happening. But Japan and North Korea, their game got canceled. The return leg... I think it was for some disease, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember that read, reading that correctly. So, I mean, this group is, it's pretty much done. I mean, Japan and Syria should be qualifying to the next round. I think they will. I don't really give much of a chance to North Korea. But the next game in June is North Korea and Syria. And we have to know what the, um, what are they going to decide with the cancellation game? Because either they're going to give the points to Japan or replay sometime in, in June. Don't know what's going to happen in that situation, but... Yeah, I don't think there's really much takeaways from this group. We know Syria and Japan, they're the two best teams. They're the two best teams. Group C, then. So, South Korea are on a new new journey with a new manager who's obviously caretaker, Sun Yong. And you draw it home with Thailand. I mean, shout out to Thailand and Supernaut with the goal as well. I mean, the, the movement off the ball and reading the situation was fantastic from Supernaut. But South Korean defending is terrible. Then the return leg back in uh, Bangkok, Son Heung Min, Lee Jae Sung, and they won 3 0, South Korea. So at least they got some momentum, you know, after disaster and all the storylines. After all the storyline, it was just keeping up with the Koreans, basically, part two after that Asian Cup. Klinsman going to get four points, not the worst, not the greatest, but at least get some momentum heading into June and then heading into the third round of World Cup qualifiers. And then Singapore and China, I mean, 
Shout out to one of my guys and one of my subscribers and who's helping me doing the uh, Discord, Ian. And guys, remember to join the Discord. You guys can talk about Asian football, South American football, and the Discord, all that beautiful stuff. Because they were 2 no down. <laughs> How are you going to allow Wu Lei to get four goals in two games? If, if China don't have Wu Lei, they're nothing. They're, they're absolutely nothing. Wu Lei got the four goals, but Singapore did come back in the first game in uh, Singapore. They were 2 no down and... Faris and Maler got the two goals. Then the return leg in uh, Tianjin. I mean, the penalty, I think, was the second goal for China. I mean, that's never a penalty. I, I didn't... I, w I watched the highlights of the game. That is never, ever a penalty for China. Never, man. Maybe the social credit score for the referee went up after that. But that was horrendous decision. Yes, look. Should Singapore be doing better in the third and fourth goal? Probably, defensively. But obviously, they had to go for the goals and try and equalize the game. I mean, it was a spirited effort from Singapore, but we, we know it's going to be difficult going away to China. But they did put up a good fight. Now this group gets interesting because Thailand have to, have to win away next in June. They have to win. There's no other ways about it. They have to win. I don't know where the game is going to be played in China, but they got to win it. Because they lost at home to China. See, that result is really going to, I think, be a detriment to Thailand and their hopes of qualifying to the third round. But, yeah, look, good good window for South Korea, good window for China. Not the worst for Thailand. I, I think one point is not, not the end of the world. Group D. Now, this group gets super interesting after this window. Kyrgyzstan, obviously, they picked up two wins against Chinese Taipei or Taiwan. Because, I mean, Taiwan are not the greatest of teams. Even though they did perform pretty well at home against Kyrgyzstan away... It's difficult. So that was good window for Kyrgyzstan. They do have obviously the two tough teams left in Malaysia at home and then Oman away. And then Malaysia. If these guys, they just don't know how to defend. They don't know how to defend. Some of the defending I saw in the second half against Oman at home. Because I, I didn't get to watch the first uh, home game for Oman and Malaysia where Oman won 2-0. Some of the defending and some of the finish. Malaysia for like the last 30 minutes. All they did was cross 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 and think that was gonna somehow magically work you got to be a bit more creative if you're in the malaysian national team you have to but defensively this team cannot keep a clean sheet they cannot keep a clean sheet they're gonna have to work on that asap they have really good attackers that's that's the good thing with malaysia very threatening going forward even though they didn't score in this window but they are absolute horror show defensively if they don't fix that I mean, the third round, they're going to go away to Kyrgyzstan next. I mean, they beat Kyrgyzstan in a really thrilling game at home, 4-3. If you're Malaysian, do you have any hope of going away to Kyrgyzstan and getting a result? Because Kyrgyzstan have beaten Oman and Taiwan at home. It's, I think it's going to be difficult for them. For Oman, were they great? No, I don't think Oman were the greatest. Obviously, they're under now a new manager, Seal Halvi, who's, of course, the former Czech Republic manager. They didn't look so threatening. Like, Malaysia did... Offered them a really good game in uh, Kuala Lumpur. Had just Malaysia, in, especially in the first half, had their shooting boots on. It, they could have taken the lead. So Oman didn't look the most impressive things to work on. But a good start for Sehalvi and his tenure as the manager. And I, like I said, it's a must win for Malaysia in the next game. If they lose or draw, uh, maybe they have still a chance. But they're pretty much out. They're pretty much out. Group B, it's already settled. Iran and Uzbekistan, they're going to go through. They qualify to the Third round of World Cup qualifiers. I don't think I need to talk much about it here. Smordov returns and you just think to yourself, what if Smordov was there in Qatar? He would have been the difference and maybe would have seen Uzbekistan in the final. Possibly. But he gets two goals in the window. Obviously, Iran get two wins over Turkmenistan. Nothing really to talk here. I think this group is pretty much done and we're going to really then focus on Iran and Uzbekistan in the third round of World Cup qualifiers. Not now. This is just this is just a little cupcake. This is the hors d'oeuvre. You know when you go to a restaurant sometimes you get the hors d'oeuvre. It's a little little mini bite, just the one bite. This is the this is the hors d'oeuvre. We get to the third round. That's the main course. That was the main course. But shout out to Iran and Uzbekistan. Now Group F. This is one of the biggest storylines of the World Cup qualifiers in Asia for March. Iraq have qualified to the next round. I knew... See, I think a lot of people were like, ah, uh, Iraq, are they really that good? Are they that good of a team? They are a very good team. And with the young team they got, Zigdan Iqbal got his first goal for Iraq as well. They destroyed Philippines 5-0 away, even though they won only 1-0 at home. But Iraq are very good. Ayman Hussein continuing his good goal scoring form. They're going to, I think, 
if you're going to be one of those big teams, like an Iran, an Uzbekistan, a Japan, a South Korea, you do not want to get Iraq in that group. You need to avoid them at all costs for that third round. Because I think Iraq, with the momentum they got and with the way they're playing, I think they're going to qualify to next World Cup. I, I think that I think they're going to definitely do that. And then the other team in this group is Indonesia. Indonesia just said, cool, we're going to take over the second spot of being the best team, second best team in Southeast Asia because they have taken three wins out of three over Vietnam. Sorry, Macwell. Sorry, Macwell. Vietnam are done. And Trossier got sacked, he, or they terminated his contract, whatever you want to say. Trossier, adios. The guy, I think there was too much expectation for him. You know, the Vietnam League has been sort of on a downward spiral. You know, you don't see it really competitive in, in a Asian competitions. But I'm just looking at my notes again. But it just seems like some of his decisions during the Asian Cup and during the World Cup qualifiers, they have really backfired. There's no momentum. There's nothing. When you watch Vietnam play, it's... It's a terrible pho. That's what it is. It's a cold, cold pho. Give me the warm pho. Give me a beer and I'm happy. That was that was Vietnam during this window and during Trossier. And obviously the expectations were going to be there after they made the quarterfinal in 2019 Asian Cup. But it's too much of an expectation. And he's gone and you just got to think to yourself. Now it's time for a full, and I mean a full rebuild of the league and the national team. Full rebuild. Nothing else. As the Philadelphia 76ers said, and Arsenal fans, trust the process. And now Vietnam have to adapt to hashtag trust the process. Let me know. How do you say that in Vietnamese in the comments down below? Because they're going to have to trust the process right now. But for Indonesia, this is, this is historic. This is historic. They have won three games out of three against Vietnam. Didn't concede a single goal. But the, the mere fact that they went away to Hanoi and dropped a three-piece on Vietnam. This team is for real. This team is for real. They are here to stay. They're not just the, the high school kids like, oh yeah, we're happy, happy to be here first year in high school. No, they're saying, we want to get the university degree, we want to get the master's, we want to get the PhD, and we want to qualify for the World Cup. That's Indonesia right now. They got the momentum, they got the players, it just seems like it's such a happy unit right now. Obviously, we know the passionate fans that they got. Shout out to the Indonesian fans for the home game. Because I was watching a vlog. Flares everywhere. Fireworks everywhere. You just see the passion for this from this nation. It's always up there. It says, got the header. Actually, no. From the first game, I, I didn't get to watch the both games. I only could watch the highlights. This long throw merchant for Indonesia, it is the Roy the Lap of Indonesian football. Because <laughs> they, they got that's how they got the first goal and the only goal in uh, in Jakarta. Eggy with the goal. It's a scrappy goal, but it don't matter. The most important thing is getting the three points, getting the three points, and moving on to the third round. And Indonesia, the rise is continuing. Uh, we saw a little snippet of it at the Asian Cup, but it's getting better. It's getting better. And I think this team, with the momentum they got, with the way they're playing, with Shin Tae Young as the manager, and he's doing a marvelous job. Marvelous. They are here to stay. And I think Indonesian fans should be very, very excited for what their team might achieve. Because they only can be getting better. Currently, they have a four-point lead over Vietnam. Now, the good thing for Indonesia, they're both of their last two games are at home. We know they're a very strong home side. I feel like they could maybe get a point against Iraq and that will be enough. I don't think they're going to lose the Philippines at home. If they lose to the Philippines at home, all that that beautiful <laughs> discussion I just had and the prop I gave to Indonesia is just going to go away immediately. I think they will beat Philippines and they will advance to the third round. And if I'm a lot of teams around Asia, I don't want to play Indonesia either. Because I think they're only going to get better as the team has more continuity and more chemistry with each other. But yeah, the group gets super, super fascinating. Group G, obviously the finalists for the Asian Cup got their campaign really going after only having one point in their last two in their first two games. Jordan, three goals against Pakistan away, seven goals at home against Pakistan. Al Tamari got five goals in the two games. Really expected Pakistan, you know, they just don't have the quality. To be in this situation is just a m massive result for Pakistan. And Saudi Arabia drew 1-1 with Tajikistan away. So it is not over. And Tajikistan are 
two points behind Jordan. The next game in June is Jordan hosting Tajikistan. Mm. Mm. But I do feel bad for Tajikistan because Peter Zagar, obviously the wonderful, wonderful manager. He's not the manager anymore. I wonder if that's going to derail their campaign, but I think they have a lot of good momentum as well. And we know the teams are very familiar with each other. So that game in June is going to be awesome. I think it's going to be an awesome game to watch and we'll see what happens then. But yeah, Saudi Arabia, they're pretty much through. They just need a win against Pakistan, which should be happening. It should be happening, even away. It should be happening. And then who will join them? I think Jordan will. And they will take that second spot there. Group H, nothing real surprises here. I mean, UAE and Bahrain, they're just too strong for Yemen and Nepal. They're just too strong. Even though UAE, I thought, were a little bit disappointing in, in the Asian Cup. But this kid, Sultan Adli, he looks good. He looks good. He was only 19 years old, so he's looking he's looking like a bright future for them because obviously Ali Mahmoud, I don't I think the guy uh, he's he's done. He's done pretty much and uh, Adil will be the new superstar for UAE football. Bahrain, you know, strong organized team. It's expected these two will advance. You men in Nepal, they're just not they cannot compete at this level, especially with these two strong sides. So, yeah, all Bahrain need to do is just get a win against your men at home or a point and they're through to the third round and i think both teams will do that so shout out to the ue and bahrain and the last group then is group i australia getting two wins over lebanon now somebody's got to let me know in the comments if you're lebanese or australian why were both games held in australia why why did lebanon play their home i know lebanon can't play in, in lebanon but can't they play it like in the uae saudi arabia or one of those countries why can't they play it there both games were held in australia and australia won two nil and five nil it's so funny with Australia. When they want to attack and actually play attacking football, they can score goals. They just don't do it enough. That, that's their issue. They just don't do it enough. And they got seven goals. I mean, Lebanon, yeah, it's just it's getting worse and worse for Lebanon. They have one goal in four games. One goal. I think they're, they're definitely on the downfall right now. And it's not looking great. It's not looking great. And Palestine picked up two wins, big, big wins for them. Dabag got a hat trick against Bangladesh at home. And they got a crucial, cru I mean, this was this is going to be such a crucial goal for them. Termani got the last minute winner in Dhaka to give Palestine three points, which is going to be, a, I think, a huge, because Palestine still got to play Australia, which you expect them maybe to lose, but at least Palestine will play Lebanon next. All they need to do is just get a point or a win. And they are into the third round, which would be also a, a massive achievement for Palestine football to make it to the third round of World Cup qualifiers. And hey, they might be another sneaky team like a Indonesia that could qualify to the World Cup. Like, let's not rule that out, people. Palestine could qualify to the World Cup because they showed in that Asian Cup. Organized, Doug Bog is a great, great striker. Keep an eye on them. But everyone, I want to get your thoughts in the comments down below. Remember to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And of course, we're going to be back here in June reviewing the games. And we will know the final teams that have qualified to the third round of Asian World Cup qualifiers. And that third round, oh, it's going to be good. Oh, it's going to be good. Have a beautiful day, people. Stay safe in this crazy world. Till next time. Adios.